Oh my god, hey, before I start talking to you about theatre today, I want to show you the t-shirt I'm wearing. It's, it's, um, Disney merch, ofs, and it's Mickey Mouse with all the different pride flags, but, like, super inclusive. We have bi pride, we have gay pride, we have asexual pride, we have the trans flag, we have the lesbian flag, we have the pan flag, which should give you a little bit of a clue as to the show I'm going to be talking about today. Also the title and thumbnail of this video. So, you know, it's not, it's not meant to be a surprise. I just, I, I just, it, it's a cute t-shirt. Oh my God, hey, welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, hello, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theater. I am secondly, a big fan of all things Disney. I'm going back to Disneyland Paris this week. I had to tell you, I cannot wait. I'm very excited about it. And thirdly, I am also gay. So, Today's video is a very exciting one for me because all three of these things are coming together in a beautiful Venn diagram. I'm an independent theatre critic and a content creator here on YouTube and I was recently invited to go to the gala night of My Sons Are Queer But What Can You Do? The autobiographical show from the amazingly talented Rob Madge which has just opened at the Garrick Theatre in the West End. Now this first played at the Turbine Theatre in Battersea, it's being produced by Paul Taylor Mills, who is artistic director for that venue, as well as the other Palace Theatre. It then played a little run at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. That's where I saw this show the first time. It was one of my favorite shows at the Edinburgh Fringe. I've spoken a little bit about it already, but today I'm very excited to get to talk to you in more detail about why this show is so beautiful and so powerful and made me sob like a baby. So stay tuned for my full review of My Sons Are Queer in the West End. Now before the review, if you enjoy today's video, make sure you're subscribed to my Stagey YouTube channel. I post new reviews of shows that I see all the time, as well as Stagey news and drama and gossip and videos of me going to all of these shows. So if you want to see all of that kind of content, make sure you're subscribed. And if you really enjoy today's video, you can use the super thanks button, which is somewhere below my face down here to give me a little Stagey tip. I would very much appreciate that as a content creator. It helps me to make content just like you're seeing right now. And finally, if you want to see what Gala Night was like for this show, I did take my vlogging camera with me and I show a little bit of that in the upcoming Oh My God Hey! So stay tuned for a behind the scenes peek coming very soon to my channel. Now let's talk about My Sons Are Queer, but what can you do? So let me give you a little bit of background on this production. So until recently, Rob Madge was best known for having played Gavroche in the 25th anniversary concert of Les Mis. And I'm going to gush a little bit here because I'm an enormous Les Mis fan. And Rob Madge was so incredible as Gavroche. If you haven't already seen their performance in the 25th anniversary concert, it's completely scene stealing, it's inspired. The nuance, the choices, not something you will ever, ever get from a Gavroche. At best, the Gavroches are sweet and capable and feisty, but Rob Madge was giving you just so much characterization and cheekiness and knowingness and sentimentality. It was an incredible young performance. Rob had also starred as a child actor in Mary Poppins as Michael Banks, in Oliver as the Artful Dodger, and then since going on to train, Rob has appeared in the UK tour of Bedknobs and Broomsticks, puppeteering and playing Norton the Fish, who was one of my favourite things about that show. Love that fish. As well as very recently in Millennials at the Other Palace Theatre. Prior to the pandemic and the end of the world, they had also been touring uh, with Les Mis, returning to the show, playing Jean Prévert, I believe. But it was during lockdown and during the pandemic that Rob and their parents found a lot of old home videos and footage of family events and childhood on old VHS tapes and subsequently went viral sharing these on social media because they are hilarious and adorable and incredibly emotionally affecting and as it turns out incredibly relatable for a lot of other LGBT people. And from this, Rob has devised a beautiful solo show called My Sons Are Queer that honours those childhood memories, acknowledges the value of parents and family who allow children to freely and artistically express themselves, both in terms of their creative fulfilment, but more so to do with their personal development and allowing to be true to themselves. With songs provided by the wonderfully talented Pippa Cleary, who is also well known for composing The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole and the upcoming Great British Bake Off musical, a full show is born. Mm -hmm. 
So I gave this a five star review at the Fringe. It is absolutely still a five star show. In London, if anything, I enjoyed it even more and it's become even stronger. There are so many reasons why this show succeeds. Central to that is the incredible, endearing, engaging performance by Rob Madge. It is so personal, it is so exposing, it is done with such charm and with such cheekiness. And a deceptively great vocal, I will say. I don't think Rob has been platforming and championing himself enough as a vocalist and as a singer, because I love this kind of old school musical theater vocal that Rob is delivering in this show. But the highlight of their performance is the comic timing and the comedy and the ability to show footage of them with this enormous, unruly diva attitude as a child and still make that endearing and still make it sweet because it could very easily come across as just an annoying child who is incredibly entitled. And it doesn't for one second because of the way that it's been set up and because of the charismatic tongue in cheek, little bit of a wink with which Rob delivers it. It's very much a hearkening back to an older comedic style. It's very Victoria Wood. And this is what's always amazed and impressed me about Rob, is they have these incredible references from consuming so much musical content and so much comedy content as a child, which has always informed their performances. It's what led to them being such a fantastic gavroche, because they understood, I don't want to say the assignment, they got what was needed in those scenes. They understood what was going to make that characterization successful. And that's something that child actors don't necessarily have the scope to really comprehend and deliver. Because usually they will understand the emotions at play in a scene on a slightly more basic juvenile level, which is understandable. They're children. That's what you would anticipate from their performance. But for someone as a child to be able to give such a nuanced performance speaks to a fantastic artistic and cultural understanding. And that's something that Rob has always demonstrated. And you see that in the musical theatre references, most of which have been kept the same from Edinburgh, at least one of which has been added for this most recent London run. It is based on some very up-to-date drama in the theatre world. I will let it be a surprise for you if you go and see the show, but needless to say, I howled when I heard it. And they're just a star. They're just completely a star. And that was very evident to everyone on the Press Night audience. Another thing I really love about this show is the way that it's been put together, the way that it utilizes that original footage, grounds it in something so real and so honest and so authentic. You feel this huge connection to Rob and to their parents and you feel so involved in their life and you feel such pride for the relationship that is being talked about on stage. It's also another show that is deceptively clever in presenting it being about one thing and it being about this is me putting on a Disney parade and that's what the show is going to be about and this powerful message of queer self-love and acceptance and of parents supporting and nurturing queer children creeps in gradually through the show and we have this moment at the end where it transpires that that's what the whole thing has been about with this beautiful song to end the whole thing that makes me cry every single time. What's really striking about this show is that it's so specific and so personal to Rob's own upbringing and yet there's these universal themes that seem to speak to so many different people. I went to see this twice with my boyfriend Aaron and the geography and the locality of it all resonates with him because the theatres that Rob talks about going to as a child, the Wolverhampton Grand and the Birmingham Rep, those are the same theatres that Aaron grew up visiting. People recognise that family dynamic, people recognise the urge to create something as a child, the response to these musical theatre works, sort of how stuff like Hocus Pocus, like Acorn Antiques and, and a lot of Disney can resonate with you as a child, as a young queer child, without necessarily understanding why you have this connection to this material. And people definitely understand putting on shows and performing in their living rooms. I did this, I dressed up in my sister's pink dressing gown and I stood a little toy microphone and I sang Cats like I was Elaine Page. And I think it's one of those things that has never been talked about so profoundly as Rob has been able to talk about it now. But for me, the most powerful moment of the entire piece is just anything that talks about the relationship between Rob and their parents. It speaks directly to every queer child's need for love and for acceptance and for parental approval. And it reminds us all 
of those moments that we've had with our own parents, of our own coming out stories and of our own journeys, whether that be a bittersweet one, whether that be a painful one, whether that be a wonderful one. This desire for love and acceptance is a universal theme that is felt acutely by the queer community. I think this show is so important for platforming this incredible non-binary talent who speaks about gender and sexuality in a way that is so accessible and is so engaging and is so understandable to all kinds of theatre goers. This is not queer theatre that utilises queer theory and high concept academic discussions. This is the most relatable, understandable, obvious thing in the world. It's the passion and enthusiasm and joy of a young child who is given the space and the support and the encouragement to be their authentic self. And that's something that everyone can understand. And I just think from a visibility perspective, the fact that we have the word queer plastered on the side of the Garrick Theatre in the heart of central London on this massive poster, that means so much to me. And that's going to mean a lot to a great many people, I think. Paul Taylor Mills absolutely needs to be celebrated here as well as Rob for writing the damn thing and the entire creative team because what they've produced is incredibly meaningful and is going to speak to a great many people who see the show inside the theatre but just seeing that show existing in the world also achieves a great deal and we should remember that as well. Lastly, I think the way that Rob's non-binary identity is communicated through the show is done so instantly and so easily and so inconsequentially but it's just a very clever and striking moment within the show where that is communicated. It's played off as a joke, but one delivered with complete sincerity, and I very much like the way that they've chosen to include that. Because discernibly, it's not necessarily what the show is about. It speaks more about sexuality and just sort of authenticity and identity than it does about the specificities of that and of gender, but I think it's really important and valuable that it does have that conversation as well. Who would enjoy this show? I mean, I think every queer person would have something to relate to in this show, and especially those that have a great relationship with their parents that they can bring to the theatre. I think there's a lot that they can share and a lot that they can both understand in this show, and I think it will help intergenerational queer families to understand each other a little bit better as well. It's also a great way for queer people to communicate their appreciation to an accepting parent and to a loving parent. But at the same time, I think it could also provide a lot of catharsis to those that don't have fantastic relationships with their parents. And as a reminder, I mean, the lyrics there in the final song, that we will be loved anyway. Those lyrics are magnanimous enough to talk about the queer community beyond the limited realm of Rob's own very fortunate experience. And yet, like I said before, this is not a queer exclusive show. It's just a beautiful family relationship that everyone can relate to. Everyone remembers that joy of childhood. So many theatre makers will see themselves in this. So many actors will see themselves in this at an early age. So many theatre fans will see themselves in this. If you love Disney, if you love musicals, this has bottled that joy that you first felt when you discovered those things and it's poured it all over the Garrick Theatre stage. But those are my thoughts. That is a little bit of insight into why I love My Sons Are Queer, but what can you do so much? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't already had a chance to see this show or if you'd like to see it again, it is running for a limited time at the Garrick Theatre. I encourage you very strongly to go and get your tickets to go and see this beautiful piece of theatre. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you're subscribed to my Stagey YouTube channel for many more reviews coming very soon, including lots of other reviews about queer shows. I've seen a great number of queer theatre pieces recently, and I'm very excited to talk to you about all of them. Also, if you really enjoyed, you can use the super thanks button down below to give me a tip that really helps me as a stagey content creator, or you can go to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where you can gain access to some exclusive photo and video content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!